Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the TAPS Golf webinar. Uh, my name is John Skies. I'm the Director of Media at TAPS. I am joined today by Robert Huckabee, Athletic Director and Director of Compliance at TAPS, and Brian Bunselmeyer, the TAPS Executive Director. We'll go through uh, our presentation today, and then we'll have space at the end for questions. Just a reminder, this is being recorded. So uh, if, you, if you need to reference this again, or if you need to come back and uh, or if somebody can't meet the uh, make the meeting, all of this will be made available. If you have any questions, you can put them in the chat box below or send them to info at taps.biz. Uh, and then we'll get started. Thank you, Brian. I want to thank you all for joining us today. Over the last few years, we've tried to have this meeting in Waco. Weather or other concerns have kind of gotten in the way. We feel like it's important that all of our districts run fairly similar. Each of you have independent discretion, of course, as to which course you're on, where the pins are set, uh, driving distance or whatever. You should have those discussions in your pre-district meet. But other than that, we wanted to come together today, Robert and I, wanted to come together with you today and walk through some general rules that we see as a host responsibility. Robert, you want to add anything before we get started? Good morning to everyone. Thanks for being on here. Uh, we have a presentation we'll walk through. And as we go through that, if you have any questions, jot those down. Like Brian said, when we get to the end, we'll be glad to answer those questions and assist you any way we can. All right, moving forward on our presentation, the first thing we want to do is make sure the governing rules are, are understood and what those rules are. The TAPS general rules still apply to golf for eligibility, so make sure that in rank one you have your golfers listed as being on the golf team and make sure you also that they are showing green, they have met everything that they need to meet to be eligible. And then we have the other sections on golf later on. We will discuss some of those rules. We don't have anything that's really different in TAPS from the USGA rules other than potentially range finders, and Robert will talk about that in a moment. The U.S. golf general rules are in play. Uh, we have no exceptions to the rules unless the local course has those exceptions. One of the biggest things that I think has changed over the years is last year's rules changes for golf made things a little different, which is why we really want to make sure we have a golf pro at each place to be able to explain any situations. Robert, you want to talk about U.S. golf rules and any local rules that come into play? We will follow the USGA rules, the rules of golf for all of our tournaments. Uh, the exceptions to that would be possibly local rules. So when you establish your, your district and or regional sites, uh, whichever one applies to your classification, be sure you coordinate with your local pro. Um, it's always advisory, uh, and we do it at the state level, to have your local pro be the person responsible for rules interpretations. Uh, you need to have a coach's meeting, uh, usually early that morning before the tournament begins. And in that coach's meeting, everyone needs to be there. And please have your local pro address. Many of them are very good about having a sheet they use all the time that has printed out on particular holes, if they have unique local rules that apply to that course and to your tournament, please make sure that that's addressed in the coaches meeting and that it's uh, covered with all of your players. We have had incidents in the past where a coach maybe missed the meeting, thought he knew the rule, some local rule had been covered in the coaches meeting, he wasn't aware of it, he was trying to assist players and, and ended up giving um, wrong information about the rules. We don't want that to happen. Uh, we don't want players to be compromised or put in a situation of not knowing what the rules are. So please cover that with your local pro. They're very good. They do these tournaments all the time. And so make sure that's addressed in the coaches meeting. Uh, like I said, many of them uh, have those rules printed out. They usually have a rule sheet that says on every hole, if they have exceptions or changes, or they play something a particular way at that course, make sure that's covered, and make sure that, that you go over that with all the students. Uh, usually you round everybody up, uh, you go over any changes. You can have situations with weather where the bunkers uh, may be wet, they may not be um, uh, in great shape. So you need to know in those situations, uh, all the golfers need to know uh, how we're playing bunkers today if you have weather issues. Just make sure all that's covered ahead of time so everyone's on the same page as you begin the tournament. The golf test this year for the USGA rules is in rank one. It's in your coach's toolkit. So each coach needs to go over those rules, the, the test questions with their students, go through the test process. We're not going to do it in Tapster this year. We're going to leave that to local discretion. However, when you get to the course, 
the kids that you have entered in the tournament, you're certifying by putting them in tournament that they know the rules and that they have passed that test. So however you want to go through the test process at your school, if you want to go question by question with your kids and go over the, the, the intricacies of what may or may not come ahead, that's okay. Uh, at the same time that you're going over the rules, one of the main concerns is who can talk and who can't. Uh, on the course. Once they get out on the course, it's really the playing threesome or foursome that should enforce the rules. If they have questions, they should play that second ball, and then they should come back and have that discussion with the golf pro. Golf coaches and parents on the course really should not be interpreting rules during the, the course of the play. We're going to move on to the district host responsibilities, and I guess the biggest one, Robert, would be finding the course. If you're selected as the district host is selecting the course and then securing the course for the day to play, you also need to make arrangements to the host to make sure that all payments that do come from one source. So if you're the host, you're paying all the fees back to the to the club. And again, ask the pro or an assistant pro to be your golf rules analyst. You need somebody there that can come back and go through. We have had situations in the past where we've used the coaches get together and they form a committee. But oh, unfortunately, those have not worked out to the best in, in a lot of situations because everyone has somebody involved, whether it's your kid or somebody that your kid is competing against. So looking for that golf pro to help is, is extremely important. The other thing as you go through the host is make sure that you have a rain out date or an alternative weather date or situation uh, if it's possible. And going to that, make sure that prior to the, the contest, all coaches understand what will constitute a legal tournament. Is it nine holes? Is it going to be the full 18? Do we have to get it in? The other side of that is making sure you're doing a two-day tournament and going 36 holes or are you staying with a one-day. At the district level, you have the option of going a one- or a two-day tournament. So your coaches need to vote and go through that. Robert? Yes, and once again, just please coordinate this very carefully with your local pro. They run these tournaments all the time. Uh, they're very good at it. Uh, they're used to dealing with these situations. And I think if as coaches, either if you're the host or just a coach who's there helping, if you can lean on that pro and let them handle those situations, uh, that, gets, that gets you out of the mix of being one of the decision makers. Uh, they're very good uh, at interpreting the rules of golf. Uh, they certainly, in a situation where a, a group might have a, a rules question, uh, as Brian mentioned, always encourage them to play two balls. When you get back to the clubhouse, the, the local pro can look at that situation. We've even had situations where they get the, the, the players together. They drive back out on the course where the particular incident occurred, and they look at the situation. They, they look at the rules of golf. They look at any interpretations that might apply. And, and they really get you out of the hot seat in terms of making the final decision there. So lean on them heavily. Uh, the, the places we always go, these, these guys are great. They do a great job of hosting our tournaments. So develop a great relationship with them uh, and just make sure they know what their role is versus your role in hosting the tournament that day. And, of course, our pro of pros is Bill Euler. He is our state golf director. So we will have that information available. If you need Bill, make sure you reach out to Robert or I or info at Taps Biz, and we'll get you his contact information. And if the pro has any questions concerning the tournament or the course does, Bill, being the, the ex-golf course professional, and now he's doing other things, but Bill can certainly help them walk through what your tournament will be like. As a reminder, some of you are going to do JV and varsity tournaments. Make sure all student entries are determined to be either JV or varsity prior to the first tee. In other words, you just don't take the top 10 or the top five. They're either in the JV side or the varsity side, and that needs to be determined ahead of time. We have had conflict where a JV set, uh, golfer has really had the day of his life, come in 10 strokes under where he was and would have placed. However, he was in the JV tournament and was not allowed to move on team you have up to five players four or five uh, individuals constitute a team so you have one team entry you can have an additional five entries on the individual medalist side so each school is allowed up to 10 entries up to five on a team and up to five individual players all players will be paired uh, develop those preliminary pairings as part of your host responsibilities developing the preliminary pairings but then the pairings must be approved at the coaches meeting prior to going out if anybody has any changes or scratches and as a reminder up until first tee, coaches can scratch or can replace a player. Once they get on the course, that can't happen. But they can up until the start of the tournament. They may have illness. They may have other things. And they can move their individuals into the team or team off to individual prior to the first tee of the match. So once the tournament begins, no changes. 
scoring. As a reminder, we have team scores, which are the top four of each round for each team. Go towards the team score, individual scores, all individuals in the tournament, all team members and individuals are in the running for top medalists. You need to, as a host, collect the scores. You need to post the scores, and you then we'll, we'll talk about later reporting the scores. Again, school entries, you can have one team of up to five players. Uh, they, uh, we have had this question before can, uh, on the gender side. I only have three boys. Can I put one girl in on the on the boys' side? And the answer is no. Uh, if golf is gender specific, that young lady can still compete as a medalist, and your three young men can compete as a medalist as well. But they cannot compete as a team. Again, all players in the tournament are playing for individual tournament honors. Substitution prior to the beginning of district play, that first tee. You can make substitutions during district play. You cannot make any substitutions once the first tee has been uh, occurred. And then after the district play between district and regional or district and state, you may change your team members, and we'll go over that process here in a little bit. Robert, anything to add on that? No, I think I think that's good. If we uh, if you have all these things lined out ahead of time, send it out to everybody in your district, and then cover it well in your coaches' meeting. I think everybody will be on the same page. Uh, and you'll be good to go. All right. District fees. We have had some concerns in the past where courses have not been paid at the district level, so we want to make sure the district host understands that it's your job to pay all invoices to the course or from the course. If you're securing the awards, make sure that that cost is included in your fees. So your fees should cover the cost of the course. It should include the cost of a meal if a meal is provided and the cost of any awards that you're going to present. And each school, you'll have to determine whether you're going to do it on a per player basis or a per school basis or per team basis, that's up for the district to decide. However, at the end of the day, it's the, you, the even though the host is paying the full front price back to the course and they're buying everything, they need to be reimbursed so that they're not left holding the bag. And that has caused some issues in the past, but we know it won't happen this year. I think many times it's best if you can uh, uh, have that information, you, you know what the course is going to charge per player, uh, if that includes a meal or not, what that cost is. Uh, calculate your awards um, in the past. I think it's best to have those schools know exactly how much they're going to owe, bring that check with them to the tournament so that you as the host, uh, if you're paying the uh, course directly and you're being reimbursed by the individual schools in your district uh, and or region, uh, just make sure that everybody knows what that amount is. Get that to you as soon as possible so that you can handle that quickly. On the entries, we want to go back and, and hit just a little bit on that. Well, each entry must be accompanied by a coach. So each school must have a coach or a designated person in charge for that school. If issues occur on the course prior to or during uh, the contest, that coach is responsible to meeting with the host to make sure that happens. So make sure everyone has a scope certified coach in process. I think rather than days past where we would ask for something, I think the, they're just going to make a positive acclamation there at the site that, hey, we are scope certified and we'll go from there. Uh, as far as your entries, again, you can have up to 10. Uh, you can have individuals. You can have team members. Just make sure they're designated prior to. The entry process this year will be through rank one. So as we go forward, make sure you check the TAPS website. Go to the golf page. Look at the blogs on the right-hand side. We'll go through that again uh, a little later. But that is going to be your up-to-date information about the tournaments. But that will also tell you how to make your entries for Rank 1. So look uh, look in that in your mailbox. Look on the uh, golf page on taps.biz so that you'll understand how to go through Rank 1 to enter your team and individuals. Yeah, please, please use the website uh, and the golf page specifically for the general information. Uh, that will answer many of your questions. Uh, you can certainly make uh, that known to your uh, to your players and parents as well who might be coming. Uh, information about uh, when and where the tournament is, information about the rules, uh, all that kind of information is there. Uh, on the right-hand side, uh, you'll always see the most recent posts. Uh, those will be scrolling there, and uh, you can look at those. Uh, if you if you remember something was posted last month and you can't find it, you can scroll down to the bottom. There's a little thing called older entries, and you can see all the posts that relate spe specifically to golf, and you can find those very easily. Uh, as always, if at any time you're looking for information, you've gone to the website, you've looked, you have a specific question about the tournament, the format, or even the rules, uh, if you can't find it on there, then reach out to us, info at taps.biz. We'll be glad to help walk you through that. 
the question has been asked, are we using Tapster this year? And we're not going to use Tapster this year for recording or reporting. Uh, your entries will be through rank one. Uh, I'm assuming, uh, and I'm making a big thought here, Robert. Robert's been working with rank one on that. We will have a way to report your scores through rank one as well and report your advancers. Is that make, is that correct, Robert? Yes, we'll be getting information out to you before your tournaments about how to record those scores and mm -hmm. then report those to us for the next level of play. So, again, if you're used to using Tapster, we thank you for those years of service to that, that database, and thank you for learning how to use it. We're going to move on and go a little different for this year. As we move forward, uh, the uh, reporting results, again, we'll have that posted on the TAPS website on how to do that. Awards, uh, the concern that we've had in the past from districts is having the district awards the same. At the state tournament, we award the top 10 individuals, and we do the top four teams, four, three, two, and one. I think most districts have tried to mimic that or at least gone top three teams. Again, make sure your awards costs are covered by the uh, by the entry fees so that the host doesn't get stuck with that. But the district can agree if you have a large tournament and you want to go top 15 or if you have a, a small tournament and you only want to go top five. It's up to the district coaches. As a host, you need to have that meeting, uh, whether it be by email or by phone. Uh, or in person and say exactly what is the format we want to run the district and what awards do we wish to offer. And on awards, uh, if you are going to do something different than the, the qualifiers that advance to the next level, just make sure that all the coaches and players uh, and your spectators know that. If you're going to give one through five but only the top four advance, then make sure that fifth place team knows uh, in advance, hey, here's your award, congratulations. However, only the top four if that's the case in your particular class face, are moving on to the next level. As far as qualifying from district to region, uh, we're going to go over that here real quickly. The chart is shown in the governance page, and we're showing it here. Robert, if you'll walk through exactly what's going on as far as how we're getting from the district to the region. Okay, so uh, 1A2A, yours is going to be very simple. You're going to go straight to state. Uh, that's been the case for several years now for 1A. Uh, this, this past year, last couple of years, we've looked at the number of participants in 2A uh, and have determined that uh, the district tournaments that are being held, uh, in essence, aren't really eliminating uh, hardly any players or teams at all. Uh, and the same teams are going from district to region. So 2A is just going to be like 1A. They're going to go straight to state. Uh, in 3A, you're going to have three districts, and those three districts are going to go from district to state. If you see that chart, District 1, you're going to take the top three teams and the top 15 individuals. District 2 is the same. District 3 is going to take the top two teams and the top 15 individuals. 4A, um, you're going to go, uh, you're going to have your District 1, 2, and 3, 4, and 5. If you look at those numbers, um, they add up to 8 for District 1, 2, and 3. So they'll get... Uh, District 1 will get two teams, District 2 will get three, and District 3 will get three as well. That's a total of eight teams. So that will be your, your district qualifiers that will go to your region. And then in the south, if you look at District 4 and District 5, they'll get three qualifiers and five. Those are your eight teams that will go to region. And then from your regional tournaments, there will be four each that will go from uh, four from the north and four from the south that will advance to the state tournament. If you look at 5A, we've got a little yellow thing there. We've had some changes in one of the districts in the north in 5A, and so uh, the, the executive board is currently looking at the north qualifiers, which is district one, two, three, and four. We have a district that's lost a couple of schools, so the, there have been some requests and proposals that that might change slightly for the north. The south will remain the same with regard to the district qualifiers. And then if you jump to 6A, uh, those are pretty self-explanatory there. District 1 and 2 will get four each. District 3 gets three, and District 4 gets five. Um, and uh, from those, uh, the top four would then advance to state. So kind of recapping, if you're 5A, if you're in the south, districts 5, 6, and 7, don't expect any change. There's more likely than not going to be a change if you're in 5A districts 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we'll get that out to you by the end of the week as soon as the executive board is ruled. Robert, talk a little bit about the top 15 or the top 10, exactly what that means when they're determining who qualifies for state. So every 
golfer that's participating in the tournament is eligible for the medalist award. And that would be the, the top, if it's top 10, then it's the top 10 scores uh, for that particular tournament, whether you're on a team or not. Okay. So the way we do that is um, let's go to say, as an example, let's go to 3A District 1. Uh, it's the top three teams and top 15 individuals. So as the scores are posted, the top 15 individuals will advance to the next level, whether they're on a team or not. Uh, and then the top three teams, all those team members will advance as a team. And remember, from one level of play to the other, you can change your team members. So everybody who's playing in the tournament is eligible for the individual advancing to the next level. Uh, if you're in the top 10 or the top 15, whichever applies to your group. And then the team members that are on that team are eligible to move on, whether they were in the top 10 or top 15 or not. They advance as a team, uh, but between the two levels, either district to region or region to state, uh, you can change team members. What can happen sometimes, and you need to be careful here, if you're going to change team members between, uh, let's say, from, from regional to state. Uh, if you advanced as a team, and you have your five team members, you can change any or all of those team members. But when you move to the next level, if you take a player off of your team that was not also qualified as a medalist, in other words, they weren't in the top 10 or weren't in the top 15, then they would not be able to participate at the next level. To participate at the next level, uh, if you take them off of a team, you could, somebody who qualified in the top 10, you could move them to the medalist category and substitute somebody else on your team. Um, but you can only do that if they qualified as a medalist uh, independently. So if you have questions about substitutions as you go from district to region or district to state or region to state, make sure you give us a, a call here at the TAPS office. We'll walk you through it. Phone number TAPS office if you don't already have it or have it memorized, 254-947-9268. Repeating, 254-947-9268. Or drop us an email at info, I-N-F-O, at TAPS.biz, B-I-Z. And we'll help walk you through that process. Another thing that comes up to mind here, and, and as I was looking at this, the districts have asked for results to be posted, Robert. That was reminded of me just now. So what we're going to do on the TAPS website, taps.biz, go to athletics, go to the golf page, is once we have all districts' uh, results from each classification, we'll post those classification results so you'll know how the teams and individuals shot moving on to the regional and moving on to the state round. We think we can get that accomplished this year, and we appreciate the folks that have asked for that in the past. For regional golf, if you're also hosting regional golf, to be honest with you, the responsibilities don't change a whole lot. you got to select a course, secure a course. The difference here is you're dealing with people that may or may not be local. So make sure you reach out to the other district host to make sure that you're planning the regional uh, contest accordingly. This is the second year of alignment. You may have already made this agreement of who's going to host last year, and we appreciate that. Makes things a little easier if you haven't then again, make sure you reach out to your other host. If you need help on finding out who those hosts are and who the other district presidents were, drop us an email at info, I-N-F-O, at taps.biz, and we'll try to walk you through that. As you select the course, again, make sure that it's a course and it goes back to the district. Well, no one team or one district or one school should get an advantage by the course you choose. So if it's your home course, Folks may see that as an advantage if they've played it every week for the year. So try to find a course that most people haven't been on. If you're on a country club, especially at the regional level, if you're going to a country club and you're making that selection, make sure that you negotiate with the club when folks from out of town can get on because they need an equal opportunity, equal access to be able to get out there and go around, uh, play a few rounds as they so desire. Your entries are the same. Your entries will advance from the district. So you, uh, we are going to ask the coaches, I believe, Robert, in rank one to go ahead and, and re-enter their entries for the regional round and for the state round just to make sure we get the names right for the pairings. Is that what we're thinking? Yes. What we'll do is we'll have a process. We'll ask you if you're going from district to regional uh, and you qualified, we'll ask you to go ahead and make entries at the regional level. Uh, that allows you the opportunity to make substitutions on the uh, teams if you need to and also uh, if you have an individual that may be qualified but can advance uh, because of a conflict or, or some other situation 
uh, be sure and let everyone know. Uh, and so that next next person uh, that, that would have qualified can advance to the next level. So again, that is a little different from the last few years. Uh, we're trying to make it easier. So if, when you go to your Toaches toolkit, we're meeting with rank one on Friday to make sure we get it all. We'll send it out an email. The, the goal here is that you will do a district entry, a regional entry, and a state entry. Is that correct, Robert? You'll have three separate entries as a coach. That is correct. Uh, each level you participate in, uh, you'll do your entries, uh, and we will, uh, we will have that process available for everybody. And again, uh, for your fees, make sure that everybody, especially your out-of-town folks, know what your fees are before you get there. Whoever the regional host is, you are responsible for making that payment back to that regional co uh, coerce. The other thing about it is make sure golf carts, we've had concern both at the state level, the regional, and the district level in the past. If you're at a country club or someplace that has limited carts, make sure that's known ahead of time. Uh, so that folks can kind of make arrangements as they go through. I know mom and dad and grandma and aunt and uncle, whoever happens to be there at the district level, they want to be able to go around and see as well, not just walk. Uh, as we're going here uh, on the fees, make sure you cover your regional awards, make sure you cover uh, the meal or whatever. As a reminder, your regional round is a one-day tournament by rule and by TAPS bylaw. The district may be a one or a two-day, but the regional round will be a one-day tournament. Again, prior to uh, first tee, make sure all coaches are in agreement what constitutes a full tournament. Is it nine holes in case of weather? Are we going to replay? Are we going to suspend and pick back up? It's a little different than the team sports. you got to have that determined ahead of time. Is that right, Robert, or you had something to add on that? Yeah, and please coordinate that with your local pro. Um, in many instances, we know uh, that you're playing a tournament. They'll start you in the morning. They may have plans for their course for the remainder of the day. Uh, that might limit your ability to get back on the course at some point in time. So just make sure that everybody's on the same page, that that's been addressed ahead of time, and that you've done your best to have a plan B in place in case that contingency arises. As we go through the championship qualifiers, 1A and 2A, you are straight to state. District, you're going uh, 3A, you're going district to state. 4, 5, and 6, you'll go district to regional to state. So we just wanted to make sure, and whether it's top 10 or top 15 is included in that chart. Really just wanted to make sure that everybody understands where we are. If you have questions, uh, if you don't have enough teams that qualify from the south, are we going to add from the north? That has happened before in 3A or 2A. Uh, we will look at that. So if there's only two, 3A girls teams in, in District 1, and there's only, and there's six in District 2, then we may look at adding an additional one. That can be an appeal. Uh, if you have that question or if that concern after District, please make sure you reach out to us at info at taps.biz, and Robert will help walk you through that. Uh, reporting tournament results, again, that will be a post. It'll be on the golf page, taps.biz. Go to athletics, go to golf. On the right-hand side, you'll see the blog, and we'll have where and how to report your tournament results. The golf championships, I'm going to let Robert walk through these a little bit. We appreciate you joining us here for this webinar today. And, Robert, what are the championship sites for this year's competitions? Okay, 1A, you're going to be at Squaw Valley in Glen Rose. That's posted on the website. If you uh, go to the golf page and you look at uh, – where it has uh, each classifications championship. You click on that, it tells you the time, the date, and the course. Uh, we've been at Squaw Valley for many years. Great course, they're a great host. So 1A this year, we'll be back at uh, Squaw Valley and Glen Rose. 2A, you'll be moving to Wildfire this year in Temple. Uh, we've been at Wildfire many years in the past, and uh, they've had some changes recently. They've, they've made a lot of upgrades to their course. Uh, they've got a lot of great things going on there. So, uh, They've reached out to us. We've reached out to them. And 2A, you're going to be going to Wildflower this year in Temple. 3A, you'll be in Cottonwood in Waco. They've been a host for many of our tournaments over the years, all different classifications. So 3A, uh, you've, been, uh, you've been in Colleen uh, the last few years. Uh, you'll be moving back to Cottonwood. 4A, you'll be in Wildflower. So we're going to have two tournaments at Wildflower this year. Uh, 5A, you're going to be at Cottonwood in Waco. And 6A, you're going to get a new course. We're going to try a new course down in the Austin area, Avery Ranch, and uh, we're excited about uh, partnering with them. Uh, we, uh, we've we coordinated these sites with Bill Euler, our, our golf uh, director, and he has great relationships with all these particular courses. He has experience with the pros there, and so we think this will be a great setup for our golf venues this year. Again, Bill Euler is our golf director, has been for several years now. 
The good part about Bill is that he knows the folks that you're dealing with. So if the pros at your regional or district courses have any questions or concerns about your tournament, they can sure reach out to Bill. When we get to the state level, each of the pros at the golf courses Robert named off, they make our committee. So Bill has the access. Each of those courses has the ability to call uh, Bill during competition. Bill will be at several of the competitions. But if they need help, they'll reach out to each other. And then Bill has the PGA option as well, of reaching back out to U.S. golf and going that way. So as we get through, Robert, is there anything else you'd like to add before we go to questions? One thing I had in my notes that we didn't cover when we were talking about the rules, remember that in all TAPS tournaments, the double par rule is in effect, okay? At all tournaments, you must use the double par rule. It speeds up play for many of our levels of golf, and um, uh, those, those uh, things are addressed uh, in, the, uh, in the rules. Um, and make sure you cover that uh, in your coaches meeting. Make sure you cover that with all the players before you go out on the course that uh, they are required to tee off uh, on every hole. But when they reach double par, uh, they pick up and move on. That helps speed up play. Um, and uh, it helps when you get to the scoring at the end that everything is being recorded correctly. Uh, the last thing that I had on my notes uh, that comes up every year uh, and TAPS has a rule. Uh, on range, range finders. Uh, we do not allow cell phones or MP3 players or anything like that. No electronics are allowed on the course by the golfers except for approved range finders. An approved range finder would be any, any device intended uh, to be a range finder uh, that measures distance uh, and uh, make sure that that's covered. If you have any questions about that, make sure that you cover that in your coaches and players meeting. Uh, we do recommend that every player have uh, a copy of the rules of golf in their bag with them. Uh, so if you need to purchase those for them, if they don't already have them, uh, that's a very good tool to have. Uh, they also will probably get, as I mentioned earlier, a list of the local, local rules or any changes uh, that would apply to the course for that day. Uh, if everybody has those in their bag with them, it's very easy if you have a situation to refer to them to determine if you can make an easy ruling or if you need to play two balls. Um, we, uh, we don't want anyone to be disqualified in any of these tournaments, uh, but often in golf because of the way the rules are written, uh, certain infractions do result in either a penalty or uh, unfortunately in many instances a disqualification. Uh, and we don't want that to be because somebody didn't know the rules, didn't have access to them or something wasn't covered ahead of time. So please make sure if you're hosting any of these tournaments, that one of your uh, most important things is to make sure before that first ball is teed off that everybody, all coaches, all players are familiar with the rules in general and how the course is going to be played on that particular day. That will help you avoid a lot of issues uh, and that will uh, protect the players from having issues that they can't deal with. You know, we can't have a golf tournament with high school kids without parents. Parents seem to be... A good thing and a bad thing both ways. But one of the things at the golf tournament that continues all the way at all three levels and any course is going to be where are the parents. Make sure you keep them back 50 to 100 feet. They can cheer. They can applaud a great shot. They can kind of ooh and ah when it's not that great a shot. But what they can't do is give advice. And we also don't want them giving anything else. So once the golfer goes out on the course, they're pretty much out there on their own. So mom and dad should not be providing assistance. Neither should any of the other spectators. Coaches. The coach's rule in TAPS is different, but it's been reaffirmed by the Athletic Executive Committee and the board for many years now. Coaches in TAPS can coach from the green to the tee box. Once the player tees off until he holds out, the coach cannot tell them anything, cannot have that communication about club or whatever. So coaches can coach all they want. Each team gets one. Each school gets two if you have individuals as well. But again, make sure that your coaches, coaches are coaching from green to tee box and that your parents are staying back. Do your best to make that happen and make it a fair and equitable tournament for all. Encourage your players to know the rules. Encourage the players to make sure that if they have questions or concern about a rule, that they feel empowered. That's a hard thing to do sometimes to a 14 to 16-year-old person. But at 14 to 16, they, if they're playing golf, if they think there's a rule or whatever comes into play, they need to talk about it with the group. It's not one-on-one. -on -one. It's one against everybody and everybody for the good of the golf tournament. We're going to conclude here, John. Uh, what did you have to add at that point? Um, well, we were going to open up to questions at this point. I do want to add, um, 
if any of the golf teams out there have Twitter accounts uh, or uh, athletic accounts at your schools, go ahead and follow our, our uh, Taps Golf account. It's Taps underscore golf, or you can just search for Taps Golf. Uh, we'll be putting photos and announcements and rule updates and all the any any information that we that we have to share especially as we get closer to state we're going to put that information out there that's a great source of information for your parents too we'll put our hotel link out there uh the content information weather delays for state all that stuff is goes out through our twitter account so if you could pass that around uh to your families we'd appreciate it if anybody has a question uh if you would type that in the chat box or use the questions form i don't see any right now Oh, we have a question. The 6A region tournament in the Houston area has been set up as a two-day tournament. From what I understand, will it only be one day? Is it a region tournament? The question there is if the district tournament in Houston for the Houston area schools could be a two-day tournament. The region tournament with the Houston area and San Antonio area schools combined by rule would be a one-day tournament. Your athletic directors can get together, and if they wish to make that appeal, they can. Any other questions out there? Again, that was a good question. If you have questions after we get done or if coach is talking to you in your district or region have questions, please reach out to us at info at taps.biz. Or, of course, we're always here to be able to call, answer calls at 254-947-9268. We may be on the road at wrestling or swim, but we'll give it the best opportunity we can. I see a question here. Uh, Riker will host a tournament at Cottonwood on March 18th. Uh, contact uh, Coach Hurt Her Hurtado. So Coach Hurtado is going to host basically a preview tournament for those of you that are going to be at Cottonwood. He'll host that on March the 18th if you want to get in touch with him. Coach Hurtado at Riker uh, in Waco will be hosting that tournament. Any other questions before we end this meeting? Thank you again for joining us here today on the golf webinar. We do appreciate your input. We appreciate all that you're doing to make it and facilitate both the district and the regional levels. Thank you for joining us. If you have questions, reach out to Robert and I here at info at taps.biz. This will conclude our golf webinar for the day.